holidays nale ad namma gt holidays da south india's number one travel brand embrace the new era of learning 5d Mr. Ram Gopal Verma, welcome to Galata Plus. So this is where we are sitting right now. It's not the factory; it's the den. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And uh, it's a place that's filled with. It's like a jungle. There's lots of trees. Yes. Lots of leaves. This above us, which people cannot see. There's like, like yeah. you know, different colored leaves. And you just took me upstairs, and there's like a tree that huh. goes right in there, and. Yeah. What is that? And then there are pictures from your films, and then there are lots of lots of pictures of women in bikinis. Yes. So, yeah. What is this? This. I think you see partly. I mean, maybe the very origin of it. It could be that I'm very heavily influenced by Fountainhead. You know, Ayn Rand's book. And in that, uh, I remember reading a line of Howard Rock when he said, "The interior of your workplace should actually represent what you are, who you are, how you think." And what you feel, and what what is uh, anything about you, you know? So I think that that's one part, maybe the origin. And then I always wanted to have an office which represented that line of Howard Rock, you know? So in that context, something I'm deep inside. I think I'm a wild animal. I'm not uh, like one of my uh, producers told me long time back. So you're like a wild horse. I mean, you you can't be stopped. You just need to be steered here and there once in a while if anyone can. So I think the cave kind of a thing, the the forest look and all that is a, it goes to that wildness in me, which uh, is the context, you know. Then of course the photos is, I would say it's like you know if if, if you see the Amitabh Bachchan picture or Nagarjuna, I mean I have pictures of uh, some of the actors who were were a big deal for me. It's not about me working with them, even as a viewer when I watch them on screen. And probably it is because of them, like a Sri Devi, also that uh, I wanted to come into the film industry. You know, then it's no secret that I always make it a very, uh, I mean, open. I say love to see beautiful naked women in bikinis or whatever. So I think the power and the beauty of a woman, I think, is the two most great prime motivators of what the world. And uh, I say that with pride. So. that's the answer to your question why why the den is like this and what are all these pictures doing so one of the most uh, fascinating things about you i feel is that is that 95% of the world i think yeah. would like has the same desires hmm. but they like to hide it yeah. because if you go and ask them whether you like to see women in bikinis or whether you like to yeah. uh, see sexualized uh, imagery or whatever it is they'd probably either be embarrassed answering mm-hmm. or they'd probably say change the topic or whatever it is like nobody really admits to what yeah, they yeah. they want right now you went went to las vegas or something i forget where exactly yes, it was yes. but i yeah. was like in your twitter there was a photograph <laughs> of you standing next to i think a stripper yes you right yeah and uh, you were standing next to her and just like not like regular people would take, a, take picture a picture with a yeah. with a star or something like that you took a picture next to her and I your hand is yeah, your yeah. hand is on right the above her, 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 her yeah, bikini yeah. or something yeah. like that and you put it out there for yes. the world to see yeah you're like i don't <laughs> give a fuck yeah. is that is that I, what I it mean, is i mean the word i don't know is right in but see my point is uh, i i realize like you know We, we all are programmed right from our birth uh, to maybe with religion, your parents, your teachers, and society, and what you should feel, and you're told what is good and bad, and you are trained to be embarrassed about something, and you're trained to feel guilty. I think uh, maybe because of my was a voracious reader in my in my t- teens, and uh, I mean probably by the end of uh, 10th standard, I finished all the books of James Hardley Chase, which probably was a start for me. by intermediate first year at godfather and then by engineering as see the covers uh, of the james hadley chase books yeah <laughs> see, but <laughs> actually to be truthful the chase books never really had anything in them i think the cover was very very deceptive yeah. Most, I, I no but i'm saying so. they more, yeah. had a lot of but i think it is um, i mean even before i got sexually awakened i think i finished uh, 
chase books. Do you chase books? Or? Yeah, like, like in a way. Godfather, I read, and then I went into Nietzsche to shop in here, and all the philosophers so on. So finally, I realized, I mean, you can see through the fabric of exactly what your program, then you realize that uh, you're always being told to feel bad about what you feel good in the most simplest way, you know. And they're also feeling it and emotionally or uh, moralistically when you get angry, when you get upset. It is basically you strongly believe that you are right and the other person is wrong. But the truth is, you can, how do you know it is right? You were just, just told by someone else, you know. So I realized uh, at a certain point of time, if, if you leave three things from your life, one is your family and one is God and the third is uh, uh, social acceptance, you are the most freest man in the world. After that, you can just do anything you want to do without any uh, feel of, I mean, I mean, feeling guilty or shame or embarrassment or whatever you call. So I think pretty much I've been living like that. Right, but, but what makes you say, I want to tell the world this? I mean, living a life I, that, like that is yeah, that, one thing. That honestly, I know everyone feels deep inside they want to live like that. I just like to irritate them. I like to kind of poke, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So basically, you know, yeah, I like to make them jealous. I like to make them feel irritated. I love it if they laugh at me. I, I'm OK if they think I'm a pervert. I'm OK if they think I'm a crackpot, whatever it is. Yeah, right. But there are also some people who, you know, who always keep saying that, oh, mm -hmm. my God, look at Ram Goparama, how he was. He made Satya, he made Company, mm -hmm. he made Shiva, he made Chanam Chanam. And yeah. look at him now. Yeah. And it's everyone's priority, predicative to do whatever they want, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like just because you made Satya at one time, it doesn't mean you have to keep making Satya uh, yeah. chapter 25, 25 years later. This is a fairly unusual uh, mm. change of pace for any director. Like, you know, uh, you start off yeah. as a very, very cinephilic kind yeah. of director. And then now you're making, diff of course, you're making your Telugu political yeah. dramas, all those things, which are things, but they're also having this these videos, that 50 minute video of uh, two foreigners yeah, in Alcoa. the desert. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, like, uh, which is yeah, kind of like a soft pawn, maybe? I don't know how to call it. It's like a... Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's okay. I mean, yeah. no, 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 I don't know how to call it. I'm really, I'm really looking for I a mean, word. I think the subject matter required that kind of an eroticism. Uh, yeah, That's yeah. how I would say, but that's okay. And if people call that, I have no problem. Right. Yeah. So that's what people keep saying. It's like, you know, how do you react to that? It's like, and how do you see yourself? See, to start with, I, I'm not sure they're connected because, you see, my taste regarding this and how I speak about women or whatever I just now described, that I always done, even in my college, even before I became a director. Now, uh, maybe that outlet of that, what I could do in cinema came because of new technology and new way of uh, looking. If I can, I, if I can release a 50-minute film, for example, in in some platform, which I couldn't have done in the theater, right. only owing to sensor and various other things. You know, I think it's a relevance which is giving me to do more or different from what they've not seen. So that they read it as he's become like that now. I was always that, now I got the opportunity. This is point one. Point two is uh, for me to live the way life I want. So because of the Twitter or various uh, social media things, now they're getting to know me and they think I've become like that now. But I was they always... They think you've fallen. Yeah, they, that's what they think. Yeah. And okay, but I, I, I'm, I understand why they think like that because uh, for anyone it uh, becomes uh, like a shock to see hey, how, why was that guy making that and this. But the truth is I was always like that even then, is point one. And point two, even now I make all kinds of films, but these because of the imagery, they get noticed and uh, discussed. Right, right. I mean, like I just said, you're still making the political thriller. Yeah, right? yeah. You yeah. just released View Hum's, uh, correct, correct. Uh, uh, yes, you yes. know, single and all that. So when people say these things, it doesn't affect you at all? No, not at all. Okay. Because I understand why they're saying it and I know it doesn't make any difference to me. Because right. I'm living my life and uh, I've been, I'm having the best time of my life right now. Right. If hmm. even at that point you were, you know, this sexualized and all that, hmm. very open about things and all that, I think the surprise for people is that we never saw this in your, any tinge of this in your work earlier. Because even if I, you see... I, I don't think so. Because see, Rangila had a lot of exposure in the Right, right. But it was very aesthetically... Is, uh, know, that, that is what I'm saying. See, uh, for example, 
me taking a picture with a stripper is a is a personal thing a what because i respect anyone and if she's giving me happiness by the visual i take a pride in it by showing it to the world by right. telling it to the world but in a film only in a film i've never done that maybe you've not seen that 50 minute film that is not there's no right. sexual content in this but because of my twitter thing they think all those films are that right yeah i've never done that in films yeah right. but why is that that's that could be because uh, i mean in the context of uh, i mean st- film eventually is about storytelling it's about characters i think sexual imagery can be very distracting in a feature film because it can overpower actually the whole point the of the film yeah right right yeah. but i'm saying even let's say in all of cinema yeah. one of the most intense and wonderful relationships i've seen is that of bhiku matre and his wife mm-hmm. right in satya yeah. that shefali shah character correct correct it's it's so intense so real and you clearly know they love each other with a passion let's say you had a scene of them lying next to each other after making love you're not showing anything yeah. you're just it's just suggesting that that yes, yes. that could still be part of the narrative right i mean to, to be the, very I, yeah correct okay. so uh, just to just uh, to continue yes, yes. i think it's because we never saw any of this mm. like like thing uh, because even in rangila and i understand yeah yeah mm. uh, even in rangila you're showing her love but you're not showing her making love or anything like that yes, it's yes. like she's a goddess correct. by the sea or whatever it is yeah. i think that's why people have this thing of what Possible. is that i think i think it's true because see it, uh, i mean uh, uh, you're absolutely right but i very deliberately even though a situation like that comes in the films have always avoided that probably the nearest event i think uh, in bhut they had one small make out scene between ajay and urmila on the staircase and that why i did it because um, i wanted to feel as if the whole house is watching them mm. you know because on the context of a horror film except for that i can't recall in a single film i've done something like that and that is pretty odd considering how outspoken i am about that otherwise you know but i think it's uh, only because like i told you like in a, in a it's especially in a film like satya you know i just feel one element like that can kind of just slightly deviate from the core intensity of the of the film right right you know? i remember one line from a james hardley's book you know uh and uh, later i i read an interview of his you know where he said i i kind of um, very very subdued with sexual things you know i probably may get just a kind of a little thing because uh, he said that when if it goes a little more than that they will probably turn the pages to look for the next part <laughs> <laughs> instead of following the story yeah in the following the story i think it's that Right right yeah. that's a, actually a good point because yeah, it's yeah. like you they think there's going to be like a lot of yeah. sexualized imagery yes. or whatever so you know a lot of filmmakers when when you ask them you know uh, why they wanted to become a filmmaker they'll say uh, oh i saw Lawrence of Arabia so I wanted to become a filmmaker it mm-hmm. affected me so much or some there may be some who say yeah. oh i saw satya and i correct, wanted to correct. become a filmmaker what is your thing for becoming a filmmaker i would definitely think i mean i mean deep inside a filmmaker's primary thing is to be a storyteller right you know? i mean storytelling is like you know if i if i mean my very early memories of uh, when i was watching films i always had this uh, habit of going back to tell my friends i saw this film and i used to narrate a story or a scene and when they used to go they say we your version was better which means i changed some things in right. the way i wanted to see it you know So frequently I used to feel that when I'm watching a film I wish the scene was like that I wish the shot was cut here I wish uh, expression was like this I think it is that desire which kept on growing and at a point of time to make a film exactly the way I want to see it I would say that is the nearest I can compare you know so then what happens is that becomes very individualistic it is your vision it is your uh, sensibility or whatever you call Self-expression. and then that makes a strong impact i feel that can in, can influence people so when I, i was fascinated with movies like godfather the exorcist and and certain for like sound of music you know and uh, i think then they tend to make an impact and everyone has an impact on some some other director right. for that matter you know so like for instance um, when you talk about satya there so many people say you know that i was influenced by that film and uh, but i would like to say now see the point is now what is a film film is a medium right. it, it is not an art by itself there is something which observed something which i heard 
something an actor has projected and how it came together in the context. There are so many ifs and buts things which actually come together, which is the reason about Satya I said, I mean, I mean, films like Satya, they just make themselves. You can't make You've it. You've told this many yeah, times. Yeah, many yeah. times. Yeah. So, I think it's that. Yeah. Right. So, you're saying it's, for you, it's a form of self-expression. Yes. So, yes, it is. So, if you made Satya then and you're making the movies that you are right now, along with everything else, mm. it's all at that particular point, they are an expression of what RGV is. Yeah. Is that, would that be right? Obviously, what, what I, I am planning something now, uh, I haven't yet uh, I mean, announced it. But so, when, when, I, when I went to Bombay in 95, 96 at time, when I was shooting Rangila, that was the first time I went there, I was fascinated with that city, okay? Then I kept watching these uh, pictures of the underworld guys and all that. So, it was like a kid left in a candy store discovering something. And I was trying to make some sense of it in a context of a story. Today, I won't feel the same. Because one is I already experienced it and right. eaten enough of that and I would take it for granted. And I know now, at that time I was like a, like a childlike point of view in a low angle towards what uh, the underworld is. Today I know so much about it, I am on a top angle. See, if I make a film on gangsters now, it will be very, very different uh, take on it. Right, yeah. right. You are saying low angle, top angle, of course I am going to ask mm -hmm. you this. But there was a certain classicism in your work earlier on, like yeah. like again in your early work and when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about Shiva, everything else. But slowly there was a very interesting change of camera angles, mm. the way you, where you placed your camera through what you were viewing them. I found that especially interesting uh, in that movie where they chop up the body yeah. and… Uh, 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 yeah, uh, not a love story. Not a love story. Not a love story. Yeah. I really like that movie. Yeah, that yeah. This kind of, uh, yeah. that, that's something that really yes, viscerally yes, yes. kind of uh, affected yeah. me, right? But there's also these 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 no. camera angles that, you know, sometimes through, not that particular movie, but sometimes and, yeah, through it. Yeah, it also had, yeah. Yeah, right. like a, like mm. a, through a TV set or through mm -hmm. some, some mm -hmm. yeah, bottom yeah. end. And, and now you've begun to break that classicism that was there earlier. Which, because when I see Shanam Shanam or Shiva or, or, yeah. uh, or even Rang, till Rangila, I'm not seeing any, everything, you are having interesting camera moves, but you're not violating anything. Okay, violate is the wrong word. What I'm trying to say is that they don't seem a little off or odd. Mm. What, what caused that, that phase I mean, where... To start with, I don't know if, uh, I, mean, I don't know which film of mine you saw last, but I would say that uh, I'm not sure I mean, what you mean and which film you notice the being there or not being there because... Uh, I always choose camera work directly depending upon the characters uh, I am dealing with. Okay. See, for example, Company and Satya I made almost back to back. Now Satya has a very normal camera work because I just wanted the actors not to be disturbed and to see them as people, almost as if the audience in the theatre are there along with them in the room and they are watching them. Uh, when you are using uh, very unique camera angles, it is like you are actually using the compositions and angles to create an extra layer which probably is not really present there, you know. So I use that a lot in Sarkar, in company. Right. In Satya, absolutely I didn't. In Rangila, I didn't use that at all. Rangila, very, very straight, yeah. high level movements. And coming to Not A Love Story, I wanted them to be very indicative of the kind of people, that girl and the guy, they are slightly little off you know, in terms of their uh, how they think and what kind of a normal person can really do what they did. It's very hard to imagine. So I think the camera work is kind of giving them the support. Yeah, right. these kind of people, maybe they can do. I mean, I think uh, yeah, adding, this is uh, something I consciously make a decision at the very beginning of what kind of uh, thing I want to use. Like a, it's, it's giving a layer of, let's say, bizarreness. To or, yeah. or, or they're, not, I mean, it's they're not normal. See, if you remember this film of Natural Born Killers, Oliver Stone's film, you know. Now, the fact that it's a psychedelic, they're on drugs and yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't even know they're not thinking normally and uh, that kind of. So, that kind of a bizarre cutting and camera work yeah. actually added to the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine that film without that kind of a weirdness. And uh, also, I, I've seen this when you, when like like a Spielberg is very very particular about compositions and uh, camera movements and uh, even the edit cuts and all that. Uh, a Godfather, you don't see a single thing. It almost is shot like a TV serial, as yeah. simplistic as that. But that is again because of the director's choice of uh, how to use it in the context. But the same Coppola, 
when you see it, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, it's yeah, a yeah. completely different uh, yeah. thing, the camera. So I think camera is a result of two things, at what intensity you want to tell the story and you add your own point of view to that or to just leave the characters and let them do and you capture it. Right. That's it. I right. think it's a combination of that. Would you say that yeah. your Bombay phase is now mm. like over or are you still looking to make Hindi films? See, I basically have always, right from my beginning, after after I made Satya in 95, I made three Telugu films back to back. Right. No, yeah. 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 Meaning? So it's not so much like, see the point is now, right now I'm starting a Hindi film. Okay. I'm also doing two web series. So the Bombay, uh, that I think is gone actually for everyone. What if, for example, this is Jagan, uh, this is a Telugu chief minister, so I'm making it in Telugu. Yeah, view home. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, before that, of course, COVID, I was here down away from three years. So now I'm going to start the Hindi film. Yeah. Right. Tell me a good film that you saw recently. I loved uh, uh, Kerala story a lot. Okay. And I was quite, I was taken, uh, quite uh, taken aback for that film. I liked it in Kashmir Files also. KGF, many things I liked in it. It is, uh, I mean, not really my sensibility, but uh, uh, the narrative structure, the kind of intercutting and all that, uh, craft-wise, it was very, very interesting. Uh, yeah. What do you think made Kerala Files and uh, Kashmir Files so... Kashmir Files, Kerala story. Kerala story, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that uh, what makes something work, I don't know, I'll tell you what worked for me. I felt Kerala story was the most pure storytelling I've ever seen. Because absolutely the director didn't succumb to any kind of a commercial format. Like you need songs, you need this, you need that track and to make the characters lovable. You know, I think there's not a single time I saw where he broke every rule in the book of what you think should not be in films and yet uh, it moved you emotionally. I, it moved me. I mean, I'm very, it's very difficult for me, to, for any movie to move me. Right. Yeah. You pretty much yeah. are in touch with every every film route. There. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I you mean, know, I see every film which which uh, I mean interests me. Maybe on a trailer level, or someone tells me uh, something like that. Right. And Kashmiri films files are the same thing. I think that also broke a uh, lot of rules. You know. See, for me, at the end of the day, uh, if uh, the predictability is what which makes you lose interest in a film, right. both in a storyline and both in the crafting level. I feel both these films had broken that and which is the reason I was affected by that. Now recently you had uh, tweeted out, when I say recently I mean a little back that, that uh, and we also had I think a conversation about this, it's uh, that all the older heroes are, are making yeah. blockbusters again right. like, <laughs> like uh, you know Vikram yeah. and Kamal Hassan, uh, Jailer and Rajnikan, Shah Rukh and, and Jawan, yeah. uh, uh, Sunny Deol and Gadar. Do you have a theory for this or it's just… See I only think… Like the Socrates line I want to quote, the only thing I know is nothing or anybody knows is nothing. <laughs> right. Because it has worked, you have no choice but to come up with that theory. And it coincidentally it happened like uh, like with Vikram to Rajni sir to of course uh, Shah Rukh, you know. So I think uh, it's that because till maybe six months before everyone has this belief that uh, it's younger heroes who are the present day things and that and suddenly it breaks the rule. You right. just don't know. Yeah. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Right. <laughs> but what do you think of movies like Jailer and Jawan? Because they're also breaking the, the huh. conventional storytelling. I, mean, I would think, I mean, this goes back to even 70s. I think uh, if you look at it, the the first time the world, uh, what is it called? The, like, like the masala film or commercial pot boilers, what they used to call in the 70s. I think that genre will never die. Right. That, that is what the whole point is. I think people love to feel a high thing and that kind of cinema will always, uh, I mean at least if it's done right, it will never fail to do that. So that becomes like a, it, it is like, you know, like when this film has to be very different in story. I give an example, when, when, you're, when you, there's a hotel and it has some nice food, some biryani and some kind of a chicken kurma and all that. And you will never tire of eating chicken kurma, even if you serve it every day. You know, with a little bit of a difference or whatever. But when you make a very different film, so you are testing it now. Now you don't know how people will react because they have not seen it. So the familiarity of the emotion, the emotion, I mean, I think that is essential for a commercial big blockbuster. So they want to have a helping of the same. They, they will never tire of it. You know? Right. I love this thing of William Fredkin said, uh, the Exorcist director, 
So film is an emotional experience and many times it is a story which will be the spoiled sport. So in the, uh, in the name of telling a new story, actually the chances of you making a failure are much more. I want to be comfortable in way, what I want to get. If you suddenly give me a new thing, actually it can disorient me. Right. I, I strongly believe that. And very rarely, I think that is when I meant movies like Kashmir File and uh, Kerala Story. They, I think they really broke the pattern and they take you by surprise, actually, honestly. You know? Right. Yeah. You mentioned that KGF, even though it's yeah, not yeah. my sensibility, but would you want no, to try your no, hand no, no, at this no. kind of movie? I can't. Because I can't. It's not I won't, I can't. Okay. Because I think that needs another level of conviction and okay. uh, the sensibility of the, those kind of directors. And uh, I might like to enjoy it, but it won't come naturally from me, from within me. I will not be able to do it with conviction. And then the chances of that failing, if I make it, is much more. Right. What does cinema mean to you? Because in India, when you ask a yeah. lot of people, they'll say it's entertainment. Mm. Is that what that means to you? Yeah, absolutely. It's only no, entertainment. See, again, entertainment as a word also, we kind of have various uses. If it holds your interest, it can scare you, it can thrill you, it can make you laugh, it can uh, make you cry, whatever it is. I think it, if it's uh, provoking an emotion in you. So entertainment comes from holding. Like if you entertain, means it's, it's like, you know, you're not getting me bored is the actual point if you look at it. And definitely I think it's that. It's that. Yeah, it is that, yeah. So it's not about art, creating no, art, no, all no, that. Not, it's at not all. that. See, because art is also again a word which is, I don't know how to describe it uh, in terms of, uh, your, I mean, uh, like and I remember a lot, a long time back, Mahesh Bhatsab told me this. Uh, he said, Ramu, the difference between porn and erotica is the backlight and front light, he said. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the act is the same. It is just your lighting. It is just your composition which makes the difference, you know. So in the context of that, I think it's also like everyone has a different level of sensibility. I mean, when I can predict or I can, maybe the guy sitting next to me might not be able to. So for me, only I can say whether it works for me or not. I can't say it works for the audience or not. A lot of times when I say this, I make it for myself. The truth is that everyone makes it for themselves. Right. It just happens that uh, others also liked it. Right. Yeah. How important is commercial success? See, again, commercial success, I'll tell you, uh, first of all, the word fail and hit, you know. Now, for example, I'm, I'm wearing this shirt, you know. Someone made it, some manufacturer. Do you know if it's a hit or fail? I just went by myself and I bought it because I liked it. I don't know how many pieces were sold. I don't know what cost it was made. So if you look at it like a product, then it is completely depend upon what did you spend and what did you get out of it. That is the whole point. Either it is a critics, which will remain in history or something like that, or is it exactly what price you made it and what you got and what you sold it and what the guy who bought it did it, or an individual's opinion at the end of the day. Right. You know, these are the five parameters of what you think is a good or a bad film. Now, I look at it, I, do, I don't look at myself as making films. You know, I'm sorry, making a film. I'm a filmmaker who makes films. Like, you know, if I make some 10 brands of shirts as a manufacturer, one might do better, one might do less, one might not be sold at all and various things happen. But if I look at the whole, I mean, uh, what do you call, the whole of the thing at the end of the, uh, theory, that, that is how I see it. For example, in all the films I made, uh, at least me directing 50, 60 apart from my productions, I'd, I'd, I frankly can't recall more than 5, 6, maybe 10. If you ask me to tell the names, the top of my head I doubt because I leave the film the moment it's done. The, I, the names of what? Names of the films I made. Oh, you made? Yeah. Okay, okay. Because I just, uh, it goes out of my system the minute I may f finish the final mixing. After that, I just don't dwell upon it. Right. I never did. You know? For example, Shiva, my first film, believe it or not, when it released, the first time I saw it in the theatre, and after that we did some 25 years cut or something, at that time I saw and I couldn't bear it. I only saw two, three reels and walked out. Are you serious? Yeah. You can't bear it. Because I'm not the same person anymore. You know? <laughs> I felt it was very boring. Boring, why? Because maybe I, I don't have that mindset. I'm a changed person. The change might not, uh, is not necessarily for the good. It can, but it's different. Right. I, I mean, I find it very juvenile. Let's say compared to Satya also. Right, yeah. right. But what do you yeah, feel I about I find the whole cycle chain. Yeah, Satya works. Even now it is working. Only two films I felt were 
I mean, almost 90 percent, I, I think uh, I couldn't have made it better, is one is Satya and one is Rangila. I don't feel about company. Really? No. I don't feel that about company. I don't feel that about Sarkar also. The company, I don't feel that because, you see, the material I had at the time of making company, maybe my understanding was not so good of that. So I learned so much about that uh, period of what happened okay. at a later stage. So when I compare with the information I have now in my head, I find it too, too tame. Is it story-wise or technique-wise? Every which way. Okay. See, eventually technique will also come from... Right, right. Yeah. But then as a, as a filmmaker, you will... Yeah. You see, when I see it, just in the way they're talking and the way they're acting, it turns me off. So after that, the uh, technique-wise, it doesn't even come right. there. Right. The reason I asked you about commercial hit mm. or flops or whatever it is, is that you had a very long career. Uh, you're yeah. still making films. It's like, like you know, from, from the days of Shiva. And usually the people that get to have this long a career mm. are people who keep making hits. Now, you have had your hits, but you've also had a number of underperformers and a number of films that have not done well yeah, at all. Yeah. How has this... But that is, that is the point. You are not understanding. You are thinking they have not done well, but that only can be compared with that what cost it was made. Right, okay. That's what I'm saying. So, in... For okay. example, I made a film uh, in COVID time. I made around 70 lakhs on that film. And the film's cost was 2,000 rupees. <laughs> yeah. What I you made said? it with my cell phone. I made it with my cell phone and uh, uh, we put it on this pay-per-view, pay-per-view theater and I got 70 lakhs. So no one knows about it also. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's a question of that. So it's a question of ROI. See, me have, of course. See, I, it gives me freedom to make the kind of films I want. No? And why I'm sustaining for such a long time and having this kind of an office is because it is working eventually. You are saying that because I said it's a flop, it's a flop. It, that could be in comparison to what else I made right. or how it uh, ran in the theater or in comparison to what and blah, blah, blah. But uh, for me, I mean, only the commercials which are around me, it always worked. At least I'm not saying 100% of the time, right. but much more than what people imagine. Right. For example, this film, you wouldn't even have heard about it. Right. This 70 like film. Right. No, but then there's you made so many <laughs> films. I'm like, you know, it's hard keeping track of just yeah, your work alone. Yeah, yeah. In the lockdown, I made three films. Yeah. Just in the lockdown when the whole world was sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. So, would you say technically then that there is no difference between the Ram Gopal Verma who made Shiva mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the Ram Gopal Verma of today because he's being true to himself? I mean, I don't know if there's a virtue. I mean, uh, if you are putting it uh, that way, I'm not being t uh, true to myself is not the point. I just do what I feel like. Right. Yeah. But that time you I felt say, like making I Shiva? I always. You made Shiva? I, all, I never did anything in my life, let alone films. I did whatever I felt like doing. Right. Yeah. Like, see, like when I, when I, I like Shiva was the biggest hit of, of all time around that time. So every, uh, like the so-called big stars, all of them were after me. And I went and made Rath, Rath, the horror film. And that's that's what I wanted to do. Right. So that's kind of a very small film compared to the kind of success uh, Shiva had. So I always did that. Only now because of the social media, people get to know that. Right. Yeah. Because you seem to be in such a Zen zone, does success make you happy or does failure make you sad? But that again, the point is whether I did, I did anything for success. Right. That's another point. You see, when I made Shiva, the kind of films which used to come, at least in Telugu cinema or Balakrishna, Muddul Mawaya and something or something. Why would I make a film like Shiva if right. I thought of success? It was going against all norms of what commercial success films are about. In fact, my father told me that it'll be the, the big, it'll be an unbelievably big flop because he, no one will understand this film. He said that. So if I think of success, I couldn't make films like this. No, the result I'm talking about. What? I'm talking about the result. Huh. I'm talking about no, the result. Not that no. your intent, yeah. but, the, but when Shiva became a blockbuster. It didn't make any difference to me. Didn't, didn't. Absolutely. No. Neither my success nor failure because I always had this mindset of to expect the worst whenever you're doing anything. So when you... In everything, even in real life, in my personal life also I do the same. So when you expect the worst hmm. and a damn good thing happens, that's yeah, bound but to bring by, some happiness. By right? the time I lose interest in the film. Okay. Yeah, that's actually what happens. I actually completely lose my interest in a film once the final mixing is done. I don't even wait for the release. Right. Yeah. Because there's nothing you can do more. 
with that. It's right. out of your hands. Yeah. And one more thing I always realize is something strange. I, I don't know if it's because of the length of my career. What I thought was bad, I mean, people think it's bad or I think it's bad. It tends to come back to me at some other point of time in the most unexpected manner. I'll give you an example, okay? Uh, and someone asked me in an interview, in an interview, you know, they said, what is, what do you think is the worst film you made? You know, I said, people might think others. My worst film, according to me, is this film I made called Antam with Nagarjuna. You know, and maybe commercial failures much more were there. But for me, especially that film, because the base material of that film, which I had in mind to make it, and uh, how much I screwed it up is what I realized for various reasons. And, uh, the, and what I had and what I managed to do with it. For example, something like Rath, there was nothing. I just, only with camera work and background score and sound effects, I made it work, you know. Antham, because of great material, I failed, okay. Then you ask me this question, they say that something good out of comes, uh, something good will come out of any bad thing. Did anything good come out of Antham, he said. I thought for a minute and I said, actually, my entire standing in Bollywood was because of Antham. And he said, how? He said, because, because of Antham, I met Urmila. Now, because I met Urmila, at a point of time, I was inspired and I made Rangila. Right? No? This is one. <laughs> Second is, uh, because Antham didn't work, I was so angry with myself. And I rehashed the story See, and See, you changed. did have a feeling. Huh? You did have a feeling. No, no, no. Huh. This only when he asked me the question. Okay. See, I had that feeling at the mixing time, not right. about its result. A okay. lot of times I make a film, it becomes a hit house like company. I don't like company at all, right. for example, you know. And that is one. And then I rehashed Antham and uh, mixed some, changed some characters and put it in a new setting and I made Satya. It's the same story. So Satya and Rangila are my defining films, you know. And they both happened because of Antham. So now I don't know if Antham is a fail, failure or a, <laughs> or a hit, you know. <laughs> because I'm, I know in my heart both of them happened because of Antham. Only I know that. Nobody can know it. Right. Yeah. Can making a lot of money take away your hunger for making a certain kind of film? I mean, I don't think it's about making money. See, I never ever thought of making money, which is what I told you. See, when uh, after Shiva, if I was being given, uh, uh, I mean, at that time, I'm talking about 1990 or so, I was offered uh, 35 lakhs, one single payment after Shiva to do a film with a big star. I said no, and I did a film without any remuneration, yeah. Rath. Whether you call it passion or my madness or whatever you wish to call, I mean, again, coming to the Howard Rock line, I, I make uh, films. I want money to make films. I don't make films to make money. Right. Yeah. You do make money on the films. Because the cost... I don't know if I do, but okay. people around me do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. I don't really care about money. That's the point. Because the money has always been available to me whenever I want it. Right. Right from my words. It always is there. Right. You know? So I don't really look into if I am investing in this or if I do that and if I make this kind of a picture, I can sell it for that much. That thought process has never entered my head. Which was your biggest hit commercially? See, this is again, now everybody thinks Dowd is a failure. You know, I made maximum money in Dowd at that time. I didn't make any money in Rangila. What are you saying? Yeah, yeah. The reason for that is because at the time there was a lot of cash. So Rangila was sold for a very low price, I mean, whatever price. Unexpected became a big hit and the distributors never gave the money because those is very difficult to get uh, money from them. So either they did or the producer did or someone else did, I don't know and I don't care about it. Now because Rangila is such a big hit, Dawood was sold for very high prices and I made the money there. So the industry economics works like that. <laughs> you know, you know. This sounds so like that, that's very difficult, you know, for, for the box office what it made compared to what I will make is different. Right. Yeah. So what was your state of mind when you said, let me start factory and let me just empower a whole bunch of people to make all kinds of films? That came primarily from because see, because I've never had experience, I just used to hang around. Uh, you were an AD studio. though. AD means it's hang around. I never okay. used to do any work. You were not formal AD. Bad. No, not okay. really. Hmm? So I, I always had this feeling anyone can make a film. Hmm. You know? And I understand what it takes in terms of that. I don't think of it as a big thing 
or only very few people can do it. So I think a film, like if I, if I talk to the individual and if I feel there's a certain point of view in him, I believe that he can make a film. Right. Yeah. And if he's got the passion and the interest, you know, then because I am a filmmaker myself, I will also know the shortcomings. So I'll probably make him direct and I'll take some of the job of editing the film or things like that. And I'm this thing too, I want to make a thousand films before I die. So obviously physically I can't make it. So the other option is you have to create 100 directors. This number 1000 is just a random number? No, or? I want to do it. You seriously want 1000? Yeah. If, if, if at all, I can 10,000 also. <laughs> you know? That's just a, what, that's just what a dream. That's a wish. It's a dream. 10,000 films with the Ram Gopal Arma name. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How many have you done so far? I might have done lesser than 100, including all my productions. But right. I, I did quite a lot of productions. I mean, it is um, 40 to 50 directors has worked right. with me. Yeah. But that was... But now it is going to exponentially increase, which is the whole point of RGV Den. Which is the whole point of? Why we created RGV Den. Oh, RGV so This Den. is going right, to be right, a right. hub for the creative aspects. And uh, I'm, I've just designed a system with all my experience where uh, uh, I want to hunt for directors. And I, and I thought of a very unique device, okay. which I'm surprised why I didn't, uh, nobody ever thought of it before. Is it the one where you said redo a scene from yes, Satya? Yes, Satya, yeah. Okay. Uh. So I just called to people to give a scene, a YouTube link of a scene to redo. And I must have gotten it around, let us say, about 35, 30 to 35 admissions of that. And at least three, I like them far better than Satya. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it's incredible. So you don't need to give them the whole film. You can just test out uh, their capacity in uh, how they get performances and how they put together the scene. Right. And how they edit it and use what kind of uh, whatever music and blah, 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 blah. Right. And that's it. Now I know his capacity. In fact, uh, uh, three of them, I already gave them three different films to direct as a producer. But why dismantle the factory then? You could, that could have just continued, but right? See, the factory, at factory time, this technology was not there. Okay. He's coming from this idea. Factory was not dismantled. It was just a, like a thing we made with a company called K Sarasara to do an X number of films in a Y period of time. So it was like a uh, limited uh, area. That is, it's not me also. I was just the creative head and the factory was basically a, a company called K Sarasara. Yeah. When I look back at that time, it almost like, you know, how, how the 80s had parallel, 70s, 80s had parallel cinema. You were almost running like a parallel industry because almost everything that was coming out from the factory, hmm. and I may be wrong, maybe some of these are not factory films. You look at Main Madhuri Dikshit Bana yeah. Chati Hoon, or we look at My Wife's Murder. Yeah. Do you think that has contributed anything to like what we see in Hindi films today? I can't say that for myself, but a lot of people believe that. They believe that uh, I would say that you mean there's no harm cinema. if you've done something you no no my point is eventually see if like you know for example when I was influenced uh, let's say by Govind Hilani's Ardha Satya or Sham Benigal's Kalyu you know and they were very different for that time period you know but many didn't come like me at that time when I made when I made Shiva you know? But uh, very strangely, I heard Prashant Neil saying that uh, I'm influenced by Ram Gopal Verma, but the way he makes films will have a limited uh, reach to the audience. So I exactly said that about Goindilani. Nilani. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I, I, I heard, where did I hear this before? Then I realized I said that about Goind Nilani. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why do you get so much joy out of Twitter. See, I would like to think, uh, see, the what is it? It is an idea. If I, I can have a conversation with you yeah. uh, and I can do an interview or we can meet outside and talk. And the same thing extends there. So I'm a very funny guy. In fact, Abhishek uh, Bachchan keeps saying that I never met a more funnier guy than Ramu. I say it in a funny way, but I, I follow things what's happening from American politics to act right. what's happening here to this and to that, various technologies or whatever it is called. And I make a comment because so easy it's in your hand and a thought comes into my mind and I just put it. Yeah. So, Many times I do to irritate the people. <laughs> See, that's what I wanted to get at yeah. because there are a lot of times you, you, you add a little sting to, to, yeah. to whatever you're saying. There's immediately like, like 5,000 comments. In fact, under that, uh, uh, you know, I was just 
just out of curiosity, I was looking at the at the comments under that uh, Las Vegas stripper photo. Yeah. And everyone was like, oh my God, how <laughs> Ramu has fallen, this, that, you know, yeah. like, where is that guy? What has happened to him? Yeah. One guy, I, I said, you won't find a gutsier person in yeah. thing because what we all think inside, yeah. uh, this man this <laughs> is putting out there. And I was like, yeah. somebody really identified with that uh, thing. So, yeah. You were a big fan of uh, Amitabh Bachchan. You've talked about mm -hmm. a lot of that. Was that the, one of the reasons you wanted to work with him in films? Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. See, uh, without Mr. Bachchan kind of an actor, like, you know, whatever I felt when I saw his films right from Zanzeer, I don't know if I could have been attracted to films as such. Right. So he was definitely uh, one of the most important factors why I got uh, pulled towards cinema. Right. Yeah. So when you take an idol, an icon like that and make him act in a Nisha, now technically, theoretically, there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong because Brando does Last Tango in Paris. Yeah. He also does Godfather. He's also done noble right. roles, whatever it is. So there's no, as an actor, you're supposed to do everything. But in our country, we have a, yeah. a, a certain box we like to put mm -hmm. people in, right? So when you do have Amitabh Bachchan play, for the lack of a better word, a pervert in, uh, in Nishab, mm -hmm. did something tell you, oh my God, some, this may backfire really badly because this yeah. man is considered like a demigod. I mean, to start with, uh, there are two, three things to it. I won't agree with the word pervert, but the point is... That's what I said, yeah, for a lack of a better word. No, no, so, my yeah. whole point was that uh, a man who's, who's a reasonable person, who's responsible, but is unable to fight with his feelings, right. though his heart says it's wrong, his mind says it's wrong, but his feelings are overcoming it and is unable to do that. That is the conflict I got attracted. Yes, the origin of it is definitely in Lolita. Yeah. Yeah. At that point of time, I think uh, mo both me and me and uh, Bachchan were carried away by the possibilities of what kind of scenes and performance in a, in a film like that, you know. But as we are coming to the release, in fact, on the first day of the shoot, I remember uh, you know, Mr. Bachchan told me he's a long time makeup man, you know. Even we, we were about to start shooting. He said, sir, this is the biggest mistake you're making. Is to doing this film. People won't like it. Actually, we had a conversation about that, you know. You know? And even you know, J.R.G. was very against doing that film. You know? but I think just as, in, uh, as an artist, you know, I think he felt that uh, he has something new to express and to catch and blah, blah, whatever it is. Yeah, but I, I, I honestly don't regret. Even Mr. Bachchan doesn't regret. No. No, not so, regret. Mm, yeah. But I thought, was there any fear that... that um, fear is not the right word, but we are aware, aware that there can be a backlash. Right, yeah. right, right. That, that's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Now, coming back to uh, the gaze, right, in that movie, that's very... There are two ways to look at it, right? And people always keep arguing. One is, when you have Jia Khan in that movie, the way you're mm. showing her is how... Uh, Amitabh is seeing her, correct? Like, like the the gaze is or uh, that of Amitabh. Yes, yes. As a for a movie audience, it made a lot of them very uncomfortable hmm. because they were like, okay, okay this girl is I too know, know. young and yeah, like, like yeah, correct, should correct. should should isn't it isn't it okay to just imply rather than actually show? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Tell me about these two choices and I mean, absolutely, I understand. Like, you know, in the context of how it can be that, but that is the whole point of the film. Because, see, she's like, you know, she's so free and she's wearing a short skirt and playing with the water and all that. And if he's watching from the window, obviously he's, he's getting attracted to her. Now, attraction has multiple things to it. The overall persona, is it watching only her legs or is it watching her as a whole, a kind of a being which is creating some kind of an emotion in him? There are multiple layers to that. But it is possible visually to see when if the audience are gazing at her legs at that time, it is easy to think that Bachchan is also gazing at the legs. Not to say that he is not or he is, you know. So I feel and that is a part of her personality. How she looks and how her body looks and all that, it is a combination which creates a feeling, you know. I think the most complex performance I think of uh, Mr. Bachchan's career is Nishabd because everything else he can draw from a reference point somewhere. And this is not about him looking at Jia. When he first tells his wife about his feelings for her 
and his expression when she first kisses, you know. And my favorite is when, when Aftab comes and is taking her off, he's standing on the stairs looking at her. I can't till today forget that expression. There is no expression, actually. I think Mr. Bachchan is the only actor who can express without expression. It's just there and you can imagine in yourself what is going on uh, in his head. Yeah. Ag. I mean, I told about this so many times, I don't know what else to say. No, I'm okay. That. Let me just yeah. let, let me make it very specific. I'm saying that mm. is there a point where you start saying, okay, there are so many people saying this is not a good idea, this is not mm. a good idea, this is not a good idea. That's not true. In fact, no one said that. Okay. No one said that. See, now you see the actors, so Bachchan is there, Ajay Devgan, and, and of course, uh, Sushmita Sen, and a lot of people were there in that. The surprisingly, no one had a problem with the content because what happened is halfway through we got into a lot of legal issues with the CPs claiming we can't use that uh, story or the, or the thing and the title and X and Y. The whole thing got into a legal hassle and the last thing that was on anybody's mind was the film <laughs> which is being made. That is, I am not trying to push the blame onto something else. Yeah. You know? The fundamental problem of AG is coming only from like one, two spaces. One is, uh, my first idea of AG was very different. And why that came also, one Sasha CP called me, who was Ramesh, sorry, uh, GPCP's producer of Sholay's uh, son. You know, he wanted to make a sequel to Sholay with me. And he had an idea. Like, you know, a lot of uh, characters died in the original film and some actors died like Sanjay Kumar, Sanjay Kumar and uh, uh, Amzad Khan and all that. So his story was Helen had a child of Gabbar after Mehbooba's song, okay. And Bachchan's character died, okay. So Dharamji and Hemaji have a son. <laughs> so that is one more hero he got <laughs> from somewhere, okay. And Jayaji's character also is alive, you know, and her. Then something he concocted and uh, he said, we'll, we'll make a character for Jackie Chan, you know. At first I thought, what is Jackie Chan? Where did that come from? I thought it was some actor I didn't know who came recently. I didn't think of the Hong Kong actor. Then uh, he said, because Shole is the biggest brand name in Asia, Jackie Chan is the biggest name in Asia. So a combination of this will get the entire Chinese market. So I have to figure out a way how to put Jackie Chan in Shole too. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I I just had a blank face and this and I, I left. You know? But the fact he mentioned Shole, I was in the back and I was thinking, is can anything be done out of Shole? Forget this story, what he said. Then I thought, what if we set it up in in a, in a modern time? And we just take the basic plot of it, right. you know, my first thought, in fact, I probably didn't tell this to anyone so far, you know. My first plot line was that, uh, because those days the underworld was quite active, I said a, a, an oil mill owner is a victim of extortion and he was, uh, he, he, was, he, he, was he got killed by, by someone who lives abroad, you know, at dawn. The oil mill was founded by a man who's old, is retired, is in Pune, and overnight his only son has been killed by the underworld, and he's a frail man, and he's made, his entire life became a joke. He using his mind, he has the money, he doesn't have the muscle, so he somehow manages to contact a shooter in the underworld, who works for some famous uh, gangster, and he gives him an offer. If he takes revenge for his son being killed by going to kill his own boss, you know, this is the basic plot line I made of uh, from, from Shole, you know. So that has a certain parallel. Sanjeev Kumar not having hands, the old man, he can't do anything by himself, he's a frail guy. And he says, you are not a, I mean, you're not his brother, you're not his son, you're doing it for money and I'm offering you money beyond your dreams, what your boss can't give. So that, that was my idea. So I initially got excited. Then what happened is when uh, I mentioned this thing and there was this uh, uh, publicity designer who I just mentioned it to him. And he said, sir, I, I just got this idea. You know, I want to make sketch of Gabbar, you know. 
and then I said, uh, Mr. Mr. Bachchan told me a lot of times I wanted to play Gabbar when I read the script and all that. So I thought, let's, let's take that call. And I said, imagine Amitabh Bachchan I'm doing. He came, he showed me something so bizarre, you know? Who did? Which is the, 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 the oh, publicity the, the, guy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I was sitting with some seven, ten people. And he showed and uh, I thought it's looking weird. And all these guys said, fantastic, mind-blowing it is. You know, now I was little doubt, in a doubt that whether I'm having a mental block or maybe it didn't match to what I you know, imagined in my head or something. But I said, this is not realistic at all. So, but he says, this is not supposed to be realistic. Shole is an iconic film. It is almost like a comic book now. It is no more, at, my, at the time it was made, maybe it was real. Now it is not. So I think you should think beyond that. Not that he considered, even I, I got confused. Then I showed it to Mr. Bachchan. He also said, terrific. Now that could be because he also was as surprised as me and he developed so much of trust in me because of Sarkar. Mm. So if, if Ramu is showing me, there must be something in his head, you know, that is what he thought. So the fact that they are saying, Bachchan is saying, then I try to match all the characters with this sketch of what he has done. And then if there he says, Kitne Admi The, here he says, Kitne, you know. There he says something, this thing. I always try to interpret it shot by shot and uh, moment by moment. And I quickly lost, uh, I mean, grip with the actual yeah. narrative of the emotion of yeah. the thing, you know. So it became like I was making short, short moments and without being able to see in a flow. And that is the final outcome. And added to that was this part, which one, uh, the, legal. the legal hassles, yeah. Yeah. you know. So by the time we reach the end, we pretty much know because ARG was the title put because uh, we couldn't get the title Shole in the last minute and uh, the courts did not agree. So we had to have some kind of a thing to release the posters and all that. It is, so I thought that was the nearest to Shole. So it was whole thing in confusion or whatever. But of course, but the primary first, uh, what, they, what, do you, what, what do you call? Uh, see, in films, if one primary decision goes wrong, after that you are comparing everything with that which you don't realize. And you don't realize the source is the problem, actually, where it starts from. That is, that is a classic case of uh, that. When you are making a film, do you sometimes know that it's going wrong? No. You never know that? Never. never. See, even with the... Uh, oh, no, like no, never. no, 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 no. Okay. The reason for that is because um, the decision maker, see, I'm making the decisions or I'm convincing others with my decisions. So there is no way I can know. Like I said, the wife is the last to know. It's, it's in the sense, no filmmaker, unless the filmmaker is under duress by someone else. That is when you probably will have a different opinion that the film is going wrong. But the decision maker can never be aware of uh, what's going wrong in the film. So at what point does that sink in? After you cut it? No, not after you cut it. You see, now, now what happens is, for example, let us say, like when I showed Rangila, to some people, nobody liked the film, and they uh, they said uh, this and that. Okay, the film worked, you know. When the film worked, then uh, Dawr, suppose a lot of people loved it, and some people I was okay. Rangila also they said that, and this is the truth for any filmmaker. I'm not saying about yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. They, they they won't be able to know, you know, because you are become so close to it, and. Uh, if say ten people I show, if nine people loved it and one person said it's not good, now I will think ninety percent liked it. Right. And I won't think this one guy could be the only right guy. <laughs> you know, you know. And it's also very difficult even for anyone to really understand something is good. Like for example, Satya, Bharat Bhai had more than forty to fifty shows uh, to sell the film, and nobody thought it'll work. You know, it, it happens all the time. You know, it's it, not not just about my films. So. You might think that there is a flaw here, there is something there, but uh, when it, uh, you like something a lot, but the audience seems to like something else in the film, which you did not even intend. Right. See, for example, none of, we know Manoj Vajpayee is doing very well, but I think he's one of the primary reasons for the film to go so high, and which we didn't, which, which none of us knew that it will be that impactful. Yeah. Not as much. Yeah. So when you look back at your, at, at your career and certain films today, you're able to precisely pinpoint what went wrong. 
at least from your that side. That is not true. true. Because, see, the point is, I might have, because going by some odd reviews I read or someone says something or whatever, I might say, okay, maybe that did not work. Like, for example, in Nishat, they couldn't take it, Bachchan will do a role like that. You right. know? That seems a fair enough logic. Then much later, even uh, as late as four, four years back, I meet people who love Nishat. Now, I don't know why they like Nishat, you know. So, the, I think lots of times even when that happens, right. like Rath, at the time it failed. But even till today, nearly after 30 years, I meet people in the airports when they come and say, Rath is my favorite horror film. You know, so I, I have no clue. So, is the key to... Uh... And coming for me, I don't see it and find out. I, I only can hear from people, from people, but they tell different reasons. Right. Yeah. You don't watch your films? No, after, not at never, all. Never. I told you no. Shiva right. I did not watch. Right. Right. Yeah. No, but I'm saying others also, nothing. Not a single film. I, I only watched, uh, that is also for a certain purpose, I watched Rangila once, a second time, and Satya. Right. Yeah. Sometimes I watch one scene here and there in the, uh, in the YouTube or something. Oh, full film I never watch. But I get bored. You know, everyone is celebrating the 25th year of Satya. It's still yeah. remembered, all that. That doesn't... No. It's nothing. It's just like, yeah. okay, it's you want an interview, I'm going to give you an interview. That's yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Beyond that, there's no personal attachment. No, 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 not at all. Because I think a film is like a, like a series of ideas uh, which came over a certain period of time and they all get together. And I might have a, a very different memory of what I think. You know, I know I kind of have a memory of why that shot I took or why that scene was made that way or just like a small, small anecdotes. But I don't see it as a totality. Right. Because the film was never in my mind as a totality. It was in bits and pieces. Right. Yeah. We talked about that 15-minute film climax, right? What is the idea behind shooting it in 4K and putting it out on the web? See, all these were done at the COVID time because we're not able to do proper feature films. You know, uh, that's it. That's it. Nothing more than that. It's more yeah. like, because let it was me supposed keep myself busy. Be, yeah, because Is I like to shoot. It, it was supposed to be released right from the beginning on the on a pay-per-view thing which we created. So it was made for that. Right. Yeah. So going by your experience, would you say that like aspiring filmmakers today can make use of pay-per-view models and as a... See, that is bound to come in the future. Right. For sure. There is no doubt about it because for the simple reason, now the output is so much and uh, uh, even the OTTs will dry up in terms of what. So they'll have to look for avenues of where they can show to monetize them. Right, right. Yeah. For that you need to have a supply continuously, the whole thing. So what's happening, the avenues of showing your product, they're increasing, out of which pay-per-view is one. Right. Not just you, but people in your generation or whatever, you're, you're among the lucky ones because you were able to make your name at a time when people still went in large numbers to theatres and uh, mm -hmm. Even a film that was considered niche like Satya kind of did well. Whereas today it's become much more difficult to, first of all, just release. Even if you manage to make a film, just get out because... But, but that is what I'm saying. See, my point is, uh, which is true, releasing a film is expensive, okay? But uh, now the OTDs have solved the problem. For not example. for everything, yeah. right? Yeah. No, not for everything. But then there's a pay-per-view. Then there is whatever YouTube. Then that then it depends upon the size of the film you're making. You know, eventually, like any product, if you think of film as a product, it's very easy to understand right. the business. You know, if you make this table, for example, now how will you know how the hell you know who's going to buy it? But if somebody is making it, somebody is buying it. Maybe somebody is not buying it. But that is a part of uh, the whole thing. You're comparing yeah. films to shirt making, absolutely. table making. I'm abs absolutely, that's the truth. It's a part eventually. A few people are getting together. If I've there's a table and you, you want to place something or a chair you want to sit and uh, somebody has an idea, he made a film, then whether there will be takers for that or not is as truthful as uh, whether there's taker to someone to buy the table. But that thing that you just said about Booth, which is like, mm. I wanted that scene because I wanted it to feel as if the house was watching them. Yeah. You're thinking but, but beyond... But the, the guy who's making the table, also the rim which is done, he's also thinking the same, how to attract the uh, so-called customer. No, but you're going to, getting into a psychology. I mean, that is the nature of that, because right. you're dealing in emotions in the film. You know? But this also is an emotion. It, it needs to attract the eye of a customer.
right you know you need to yeah. see the table and say i want to buy the table yeah yeah right i mean i, th I think uh, films being special as art uh, things i i don't subscribe to that at all right can filmmaking be taught no yeah i i honestly think the film uh, uh, what do you call the film institutes are, are a big I, i don't mean a sham as by design they're completely outdated in the concept of being taught, right. especially in today's time because at my time we didn't have access to the instruments right. we didn't have access to the filmmaking tools or whatever you call today anybody with the internet he knows probably more than which is what is being proved by what i told you about my th my test uh, to them so film making in the truest word i think uh, is uh, what do you call you need to see the personality of the director right something about him what he thinks his characters his way of presenting an emotion or a dialogue the first time i felt that consciously was with uh, mr balchandar you know in the black and white films used to make with kamal and jay sudha and all that that was at least me consciously that was when i felt there was this something different about this film i felt that about steven spielberg you know so there is the personality which reflects in the thing that is what i define as a director right so w what i'm trying to ask is not not but just by film institutes but you think that you have to have it in you and that can be honed but or can somebody with with, with without any skills come and yes. still become a filmmaker absolutely they can yeah okay. which is the case is me uh, i didn't have any skill but i know but worked. you have a sensibility are but even that guy will have the sensibility anybody who wants to be something become something in any kind of a field he will have some understanding of which is the reason he wants to come there unless he is doing it to come for a job to make money okay but yeah. you had that what you mentioned long no, i had the obsession i right. had the obsession for cinema but i never saw a single film in my life whether be on earth for the sake of the story right yeah stories never made any difference to me i was fascinated with audio visual experience and the story just have to have a semblance of putting it together you know right yeah right. i was into the craft much more into the craft yeah yeah which is why and the fundamental emotion because emotion gives me an idea of the performances like satya i didn't have a script i didn't have one line order but it's very sure about the characters what i'm dealing with right yeah and every time i i was asked with with no script and i i used to say in real life also you don't know what happens so let's figure out what will happen next you know but real no. life lasts over a long time a film i know but the film also you can keep making it you can yeah. keep not that i did lot of mistakes or anything but it's like it's i might not have uh, when we're talking in the afternoon i might have it tonight right i know you you've made movies like rakta charitra on and off you've made these films but now you see to be making a number of these uh political films uh, especially based on that is also not true because see the point is uh, I I I make so many small films this film I make some lesbian film called dangerous or whatever I think that's getting uh, so people think I'm only making these kind of films which is not the truth no, I'm, I'm not saying you're making only that mm -hmm. I'm saying even you're the, making even, a little no, more of this no, than you used even, to even no not really because see the point is one is the last film I made before uh, this uh, jagan was in 2017 right that is nearly what 6 uh, years back yeah. uh, lakshmi sentia yeah in between I didn't make anything yeah okay but i made quite i made rakta chartra i made a sarkar i made uh, gayam and you know based on something to do with real life right but i definitely get inspired a lot by real people and real uh, incidents that's true even of your yes. other films yes like you mentioned about rangila was based on your school yes, friend yes, or yes, college yes. friend or something yeah, like that yeah even my so called fictional films will always have some character or some strong incident which triggers the film right yeah so what can we expect from the den uh, uh what the films that you're going to make in the den see right now i am working on the, this film which, uh, which i'm which i'm going to start quite soon it's about to see the in, interesting there's a thing in the 60s i'm i'm talking about uh, bombay there were these street gangs you know and um, most of them kind of got uh, into this hardline political parties like shiv sena and all that 
So they are the same people, but they just have you now a, a kind of a board, you know, in pretext of some kind of a political party or an ideology. Then in the late 70s, beginning ages, smugglers came. You know? Now because the, the restrictions on electronic goods, gold, this and that. And then when Manmohan Singh reforms came, they disappeared. Then the 90s, the corporate gangs came, like D Company and all that. Now they also disappeared by the end of 2005. An interesting pattern is uh, just when you thought they've gone, they come back in another form. Okay, bigger and better and more dangerous every time. So as we speak, there is no underworld in since the last 10 years in Bombay. So I am visualizing a new kind of an underworld, how it would come if it comes now. Uh, this is the near future, maybe in the, in the next few months, because that always the start point will be one incident right. for you to wake up uh, to a new kind of a menace. You know? So obviously, from my knowledge of the earlier underworlds, I am imagining a new kind of a criminal organization comes, what would be its motive, what would be its uh, modus operandi, and what would be its purpose? It can't be simple things like extortion and all that. It has to be much bigger. So that is what I'm working on right now. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And this yeah. is a... Uh... It's called syndicate. Okay. Yeah. Why it's called syndicate is because uh, I feel in today's times, like any time an underworld comes, it always comes from chaos. It comes from this lot of disturbance and the way it is working and they take advantage of it. For example, American mafia came in 1930 because of the prohibition. Mm -hmm. You know, so right now there's so much of uh, polarization, the divide and the religion, the caste and of course the language, everything is fighting everyone. So this is a time right for an organization to come and this will have to be a mix of many things. It can't be just criminals. There have to be businessmen, there has to be some political guys, some outer forces, I mean foreign uh, forces. And all of them together, there will be some kind of an ideology. So all of them are working together for a common agenda, which is the reason I'm calling it a syndicate. Nice. Yeah. How long does it take to develop a script like this? Script is already over. Right, but how long did it take? Uh, I won't say, I mean, because if, uh, say, and when you get an idea, and when you keep on honing on it, you might not do anything for two months. I might get busy in some shooting, and I'll again come back to that. So I would say, I first got the idea about a year back. Okay. Yeah, I would say. But that doesn't mean I'm the whole year I'm working on. Right, right. Yeah. But to actually put down the thing, you it took how long? A few months? Not more than that. Yeah. Right. See, I do it very fast once I get the core of the idea. You do it yourself? Yeah. Mostly. Are you are you a writer or a, you do voice notes or how do you do no, it? No, no, I, I write. You write? Yeah. Thanks so much, yeah. Rama. It's just like always a pleasure talking to you. Mm. Uh, we have these occasional box office conversations over the phone. That's kind yes, of interesting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where uh, we talk about certain movies. That's also something of great interest to yeah. you, I think. Like that really fascinates you, right? Like why a movie does well or... Yeah, uh, even though because you see, uh, yeah, the beauty of it is, is you, I've been there for some 35 years and, uh, and every Friday you get, suddenly you know that all the last 35 years you didn't know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> It's like uh, it might happen in many businesses. I'm not aware of that because we I don't know the technicalities of that. Right. But I think it's uh, uh, yeah because see the the reason for that is because we have this huge problem as filmmakers. We tend to make the audience one, label them the audience, and it has it is just one piece which has the same emotion of what you think it it has or it should have. But the actual thing is they're all different people. Right. Right. You know. <laughs> you know. Let's say just based on this year, yeah. if there is, like if you think, because you know, people will tend to follow successful models, right? They are, they are you know, the general uh, uh, producers and all that kind of thing. Do you think we'll see more of movies where the hero is heightened and you know, this model of filmmaking? I mean, I would, uh, I would definitely think the next two, three years will be that because... That will be our version of Marvel movies or whatever uh, it is. Marvel, I don't know, is the right word, but I would think of this Patan, Jawan, and of course Vikram, and uh, these kind of uh, very hero-centered films which have done such big numbers, I think they will dominate. And interestingly, movies like Kerala Story and Kashmir Files doing that also is unbelievable. They are the exact opposite on the spectrum. 
which proves my theory the audience are very different. I'm not saying the same audience don't watch both of them. I'm not right. saying that. But it could be just that uh, in some mood, I'm, I might see uh, Amitabh Bachchan and Shan Shah and next day I might watch Ardha Satya. I might like both of them. Yeah. 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 And also, like you say, yeah. we have enough of a population to... Correct. Even if half watch this and half yes, watch yes, that, yes. both can become hits. Yeah. So thank you and all the best for Den. Yeah, thank you. Holidays Nale, Adinama GT Holidays Ta. South India's number one travel brand. New way learning through 5D.